Okay, we are going to go through a comb beam analysis of this fine specimen. His name is Josh Silver. Oh, that's me. Okay, let's take a look. Here's our regular viewer. One, two, three. Let's take a look in 3D. So, this is how I always start my films, is I try to get the skull unrotated. So, the first thing I actually do is I try to long, line the jaws up. And right here, the jaw pretty much lines up at negative 2, or negative 92. So I know that at negative 2, I'm in the ballpark of having at least a jaw unrotated. And now I'm at a negative 2 down here. So I assume right here, the skull is not rotated. But to double check it, I do the standard measurement system we do, of marking the lateral parts of the orbit, and then seeing how is the distance side to side. From here to here, I overlap these so that I can't bias it and create tilt. And I see that it is within 0.16. So that's pretty stinking close. I could try to unrotate it more, but it's really not super necessary. My first mark I'm going to try to do is find how is my head tilted. So to use a to do this, I use my screen protractor. And this little nifty tool can just measure any angle I want. It's got a couple different uh, features on it. Never have sticky angles on. And it costs $30. And it's good for life. So usually what I'll do is pop this between the teeth. And then as I take it straight up through the head. Come on. I try to mark the head tilt. You can check this with all the skin on. What does it look like with my skin on? Mm. I'm going, I got 0.36 without skin. That looks pretty sinking close to me. 0.36 degrees tilted to the right. We could check the earlobes, even though they're not ever accurate. This says I'm tilted to the left by 0.6 degrees. What about the eyes? Eyes are a good thing to take a look at. If I put it right here in the lateral corner, eyes open, that's much easier to see that point. Put that on the lateral corner and like maybe 0.1 to the right. Let's take all the skin off, try and come up with our final line on this. How do the eyes measure? We can put this on the bottom of the orbit. That looks pretty consistent. 0.1 to the right. Put this on top of the orbit. Right there, I could even go a little bit more to the right, point 0.2. So, you know, this isn't the most accurate method, but I'm going to say I have a head tilt to the right of 0.2 degrees. And normally I would do this on a sticky note because it's faster, but I, I'm trying to share with you guys. I'm going to say my head tilt is tilting to the right by 0.2 degrees. And I'm also going to make sure I know that this is my right side and... This is my left side. Okay, so we have our first line. And what we know is that to have my skull unrotated, we need to come in at a negative two. So to get a completely perfect posterior to anterior view, 180 degrees from negative two would be the 178. That is gonna be my straight P to A without any rotation. And the first thing we're gonna do is start to measure our atlas tilt. Now when I tilt the image, I can line up these arches and I can see my S line like I normally would be seeing it. How I like to do this is I'm going to take that screen protractor and I'm going to go ahead and just measure the typical points we would to try and get this on our x-ray. So let's do the inferior lateral margin and let's line it up here. And this is measuring my atlas is tilting to the right. Uh, 178.3, so that'd be like 1.7 degrees to the high on the left. And that is going to be a little bit less. That's about 1.1 to the left. And that's even more. That's going to be high on the left by four point, by uh, less than four degrees. 
So we have to kind of do our best fits here. You know, we can draw these lines too. Boom, boom. And last one here. Boom, boom. And it looks like the inferior line is the one most in the center. So that's the one we're going to go for. This is kind of our best fits line. That's the one we have to go with. I can measure the tilt of that with my screen protractor, and I'm measuring 177.86, which means it is high on the left by 2.1 degrees. So again, I would do this on a sticky note, but we're gonna say we are high on the left by 2.1. That is gonna make our ACD a left 1.9. Right? It's just going to be the AFP minus that 0.2 because it's going away from it. 1.9. If the head was tilted to the left by 0.2, then you would add them together and it'd be a left 2.3 ACD. Okay. So that is two of our most important and our hardest lines to find. What we're going to do next is we are going to try to look at the rotation. So to look at the rotation, I tilt my image so the C2, C1 joints nice and open, and I cut off everything below the atlas. So we're going to cut off C2, let's zoom out, and we're going to cut off the rest of the neck. We're still unrotated at that 178. And now when we rotate our image all the way under, we know already that the skull is unrotated because we took our time to do this before. It should be pretty stinking close to zero. And look at that, it's 0.1 off. So we know that the skull is unrotated. All we have to do is look at our atlas rotation relative to the skull or to the, the image. Okay, so again, we're gonna deal with real aberrancies that exist just now we can see them better. Let's do a best fits line of the posterior part of that atlas. Let's find the anterior part and I kind of do it where that rim meets the cortex. Like that, we can look at our transverse foramen. We can look at our TP, but that's pretty hard to pick what part of the TP to put it on. And then we can find our best fits. So I usually just overlap them over a single point. And you can just skip this step altogether and use your protractor if you want. Everything is really congruent on that line. So let's measure what that line is. Put my protractor right here. I'm gonna put it along this line that we found. And it looks like my atlas is posterior on the right side by 0.9 degrees, anterior on the left by 0.9. And since our ACD was an anterior, or was a left, we know that our rotation is gonna be a left anterior by 0.9. And that's my HRY, left anterior 0.9. Okay, let's refresh. Let's go ahead and take a look at the C2 rotation now. We'll take it to negative two, unrotated, and we're gonna trim off the lower neck. We're gonna trim off the C2 body, but we're gonna spare the top of the dens. We're gonna cut through the lamina and spare the C2 spinous. All right, let's take it back to negative two, our starting point. And when we rotate it this way now, this is the projection we get. I'm gonna zoom in, and what we wanna do is find the center of our dens. So the den center is here, to here, to here. Oh, my bad, let's redo that. If you tilt the image, your lines will disappear. So pick your final image and then draw your lines. Let me get that protractor back. And let's measure our C2 rotation from the dens to the C2 spinous. And I am measuring 
0.6 degrees to the left. My C2 dens is, or spinous is point left by 0.6 to the left. Again, just sticky note this part, but on our left side, our C2 is, we said, 0.6. Pretty small C2 rotation. Refresh. For the cervical spine line, I will take this back to my 90 degrees, and I will trim off nothing except for the posterior arch. Then I'll bring it back to that negative 2, which was 178, to have an unrotated posterior to anterior view. And this part could be better. How I do this part is just because I don't have a center point tool for the screen. If I did, we could skip all of this, but right now we don't. I use my snipping tool. I'm going to take a picture of this region. I'm going to save this picture to my downloads as Josh Silver CS, cervical spine. I have another tool called IC Measure. And for pictures, import image, downloads, all files, Josh Cervical CS. Okay. Where's my picture? I'm sorry about this. That's me right there. Now I have under measure, I have a two point circle finder and all I use it for is center point the dens. Center point that center point with the C2 spinous. Center point, the lowest part of the neck you can see from side to side. And we are now ready to draw our cervical spine line. I will use my screen protractor and let's clean that up. There we go. We're going to put this over the center of the lowest vertebra I can see. And then we're going to put this over this point. And this would be the normal cervical spine that we would always draw. This is very traditional, actually, to find the center of that neural canal. This says it is leaning to the right by 0.1 degrees. So my cervical spine is tilted to the right by 0.1 degrees. Let me draw that. Point 0.1. Since my cervical spine is tilted to the right, 0.1, and my AFP is high on the left by 2.1, that would say that my lower angle is on the right, and it's 2 degrees. And that's it. Okay, so the very last thing we're going to need is a 3D MPR viewer. And what we're going to do is get everything centered over the atlas. First of all, and we're going to scribe our S line. And we're going to make sure that's right over the lens. And we're going to line it up with the nose best we can to see our C over A view. Now, you can be a little picky about this, and sometimes I like to be. If I widen this, and I'm looking through the C0 or C1, C2 joint, it's kind of cut off at this uh, ASP line. But if we do our C2 line, like we would take the x-ray through the posterior body of that. It's also cut off. It turns out to see this angle the best is usually kind of right between the two. And if I tilt the image like that, I'm actually between, between my atlas line and between my typical C2 line. This gives me the best view through C2. So we're going to close this up. And we are looking at what's going to be our C over A. So to measure this C over A, we're going to use this ellipse tool. And I'm able to draw a circle. And if I hold shift, it becomes a perfect circle. I'm going to need one of these for the condyles and one of these for C2. So I'm going to draw this 
until it fits a nice looking circle that can tuck into that. And it looks like it's still a little too small. Still too small. That looks pretty good. That looks like that's my condor circle. Just a little bit more. Because I'm picky. To do my axial circle, let's make a slightly bigger circle. Make sure you're holding shift when you're changing the size of these. And we're going to put that over C2. That's a pretty good looking axial circle. Okay. Okay, cool. So the area of my condylar circle is 59 and the area of my axial is 87. This is in centimeters and I believe the calculation is done in diameter and inches. So to convert 59 centimeters squared into a diameter, I use this area to a diameter circle calculator. We have centimeters squared converted to inches. We said it was 59 degrees. And so our condylar circle is a 3.4. Let's write that in here. Condylar circle would be a 3.4. And our axial was measuring in at an 87.1. So in the calculator, 87.1 is a 4.1 axial circle. So we got a 3.4 over a 4.1. And that's what we're seeing. That is going to be all the numbers that we're going to need for our measurements. So before I close this viewer, I like to double check two things. All right, so the last thing I'm going to do before I close on everything is I like to grab a nice little posterior view of the patient for so I can take a last little minute peek and something for them to take a look at. This is us without any rotation. And let's zoom in a little bit. We're gonna grab a snip of this. Snipping tool. Let's grab a picture of this. And we're gonna save this as Josh Silver Posterior. The other thing I want to grab before I get rid of this is the transverse process. So I'm going to line those jaws up. We're at that negative two. There's no rotation in my skull here. And how I like to do this is I'm going to draw a line along the mandible using this line tool. And we don't need any of these measurements, so get them out of the way. I'm going to draw some lines across my mastoid. So I can see where that mastoid is. And then I'm gonna trace my transverse process. So I have an idea of where that is. I have a little pontical right there too. What I'm gonna do is fill all the skin in and I can see right where my TP is relative to my earlobe and my mastoid and my jawline. So let's save a picture of this as Josh Silver, left TV. Okay, so what we need to do now is calculate how everything is going to be needed to be done. And for that, I use this Sonus Blueprint from James Beadle. Here's Dr. Who Adjusted, new patient Josh Silver. My birthday is April 8th, 1988. And my complaints, we'll just say I'm a pain in the neck. We have a whole bunch more options you can do for exam, subjective, and other x-ray findings. But for today, we're just going to use the calculator. So today's date is 2-13-2022. And let's just punch in what we found. The FAC is basically the laterality. And we said for me, I had a left laterality of 1.9, 1.9. I didn't measure a condylar aberrancy today. My lower angle was on the right. 
and we measure that as, wasn't that a 2.1? It's a 2. So my lower angle is a 2. The atlas rotation we said was anterior on that left side by 0 0.9 degrees. Oh, 0.9 degrees. And my C2 was on my, what do we say? It was on my left side by 0 0.6 degrees. So for this one, we actually have to do 0.2 because they triple it, because that's the old way of doing it. My FA is my atlas tilt, and we said that was high on the left by 2.1 degrees. My condylar circle is a 3.4, and my axial circle is a 4.1. So that's pretty much all we need. If we pull me up here, here is my listing card. This is going to be all of my measurements. This is going to be our table placement procedures for this type of positioning. And then this is cool. This is the Z or the acreage equation. And so I need to be adjusted at a Z of 8.9 with an anterior 0.9. But sometimes when you're measuring their head height angle and you're measuring it at a 4 and the Z is a 4.9, it changes the Y. And it is a last second calculation that he's actually built into this software. We have my exam, my short leg was on the left, my low back was on the left, my palate, you can put that in, and then you'll end up putting your post factors here. This calculator, when done with, in 2020, shows you the TP location, but we have better done that. You can kind of see how they're rated compared to other patients. So this is some pretty cool software that we're using, but it's really just to get these two numbers, a 0.9 and a 0.9. I like to grab a picture of my listings. Boom. And I'm going to save this as Josh Silver Vectors. The last thing I do is we open up Word. Vectors. We're going to drop in our TP. I'm going to drop in that posterior. And I like that on top. That second. And that's my listing. I'm going to save this as Josh Silver Final AO, and I like to save this as a PDF. And here we go. This is my complete listing card. I've got my TP location, all the math I'm going to need, and a nice posterior so I can double check that little contralateral pattern I have going on there. That's basically how I'm doing it. Looks like it took us about 30 minutes. Practice makes perfect. But I do want to show off that in the next couple months, we will have this ready for you guys. This is going to be our new software. And so when this software is done, all you'll need to do is hit this Run Analyzer button up here, and your data will become digitized into a 3D model where the planes have already been selected for you. And so you can see that it's automatically graphed your horizontal skull line. It just draws out all your different tilts. And so if we take a look at frontal atlas cranium angle, we're going to get an image like this, where you can see it's drawn your skull line, your frontal skull line. It's drawn your frontal atlas line. It's used various points in deciding how to do that. And it's going to just spit out that it's a left 1.2 ACD here, or your frontal atlas spine line, right? If we look at what is this, this is a left acute cervical spine of 5.6. We'll have horizontal atlas rotation. We will have Entry sensor. actually a new Added. horizontal. Well, actually, I'll have a horizontal axis rotation. We'll be able to measure C2 off of the horizontal plane. So I think this is going to make our lives much easier. There's just so much we can do. One view I've been kind of playing with on this is if we just turn on the skin, we turn the volume down on that skin, and we turn it up on the bones a little bit. Again, look at that transverse process to earlobe. 
right there next to that earlobe. So this is going to be great and it's going to be game changing for us and it should be done relatively soon. I hope you guys found this video helpful.